Rohingya, the most persecuted minority in the world. Just at the beginning of this year, hundreds of them landed in Aceh to escape the massive scale of violence and military crimes in their home country, Myanmar. Now, more than one million of them have fled their home country in order to build a new life without discrimination. But what actually happened to them? And what is the history behind all of this? Let me tell you how it all started. To begin with, let's get to know about the Rohingya first. The Rohingya people are Muslim ethnic minority group who speak Rohingya, a dialect that is distinct to others. They trace their history back to the Kingdom of Arakan, located in the present day of Myanmar. Almost all of them live in the western coastal state of Rakhine and is believed to have lived there since as early as 12th century. After being ruled by the British for more than a hundred years, Myanmar gained their independence in 1948 and began issuing national identification card to all citizens, including Rohingya. Then, when did the Rohingya crisis start? So far, everything was still on the right track, wasn't it? But soon after, the military started to overthrow the government on 60s and then it started to turn the Rohingya's lives upside down. Fast forward to the 70s, the military government passed the Emergency Immigration Act confiscating the Rohingya's national registration cards as they were seen as foreigners. This is not a new issue uh, and I think that it's fair to say that we have forgotten about what has happened in the past because indeed as you say the Rohingya uh, they are people that have lived in Myanmar for centuries and there has been problems for, for a long time. If we look at what has been documented, that uh, already back in the 1940s, when the Japanese invaded uh, Burma at the time, uh, there were also Rohingya that fled to Bangladesh. Then there have been throughout the years, for example, in the 70s, there were also movement to Bangladesh. In uh, one, another important point in history was in 1982, when Myanmar adopted a new citizenship law which basically excluded the Rohingya people from being citizens in Myanmar. So that means that today and since that time they are by law and de facto stateless people. The 1970s and 1980s were the most critical point of the Rohingya history. During 1977 and 1978, the military launched the operation of citizenship status verification with a wave of violence. This had forced the first Rohingya mass exodus to Bangladesh. Many returned home a year later, before the military regime stripping them of their citizenship rights in 1982. And in 1994, the junta refused to issue birth certificates to babies born of Rohingya parents. With that being said, the next question perhaps would be, why? Why are Rohingya discriminated and persecuted to this extent? According to human rights activists, the reason for this hatred is simple. Nationalism fueled racism. The Rohingya becomes an easy target for Myanmar's ultra-nationalists, since they come from different ethnicities, religions, and have different physical features. For instance, in 2012, 
some Buddhist citizens established the 969, a Buddhist nationalist movement that erupted into state-supported violence against the Rohingya. In 2014, ultra nationalist monks created Mabata, a social and religious movement that became the most prominent anti-Muslim and anti-Rohingya organization. This scalating hate speech against Rohingya also went widespread around media, creating the false narratives that Rohingya do not belong in Myanmar. But the peak of the crisis occurred in 2016 and 2017. In October 2016, a small group of Rohingya men attacked the military post and the military disproportionately retaliated by burning Rohingya homes in a targeted campaign to push them out of Myanmar. In August 2017, the military planned a clearance operation on Rohingya throughout Rakhine State. They massacred men, raped women, slaughtered children, and burned all homes, schools, and mosques. This has triggered the largest massive wave of exodus to find a safe sanctuary but the question would be, where did they go? According to the latest data presented as per October 2022, more than 1 million of Rohingya people have fled home, while more than 700,000 fled into Cox Bazar, Bangladesh. The home to the world's largest refugee camps. Meanwhile, the rest of them are seeking refuge in Malaysia, Thailand, and Indonesia while waiting on an uncertain period of time until they get resettled in a new country. Their journey to find new homes is not without any challenge. They are afloat in the sea for more than a month and have to survive without any food and water, while also dealing with unpredictable weather as their lives are on the line. Today, the path toward a peaceful resolution is still very much unclear. Although many international organizations have become helping hands for the Rohingya refugees, but for them, it is still not enough to rebuild their lives again. Their home is long gone. What's left now is just their past stories, memories, and hope for the future. Adelia Dinda, and Dipta Dimiguna for See Today.